Cool. You know, it's a, a bit disconcerting yes. for, for you to sit here and tell Kenyans how they're being fooled, mm -hmm. yet you sit at the house that has the mandate, has a, the ability to even invite information to be availed to you. We, we are getting this information from the social media, from uh, outside, outside, out there. But you sit I in a not, house I of record. Not, I have not earned from the minister of, uh, in charge of health, or even uh, CS in charge of health, saying that we have signed for a system which is costing Kenyans 104 yeah. Uh, billion Kenya shilling. No, and the public if investments the, committee, if, the public if, investments committee and, and, have someone finished. And if yeah. if that is true, yeah. if that is true, from where I stand as a member of parliament, it is wrong to have a system which is costing Kenyans one or four billion Kenya shilling. There is no such a system anywhere. So you what know, are you going to the do? The best health system in yeah. the United States of America. If you if you check. It didn't cost more than, uh, than uh, I think, $10, so $10 million. Tell me, dollars, Honorable, $10 million. Because they so, represent the people of Mbere North, yes. what are you going to do about this? I can help Mishimu Ahuruku because I sit now, just to let sorry, you know. Sorry, I asked the member of parliament from Mbere North. I will ask a question in parliament for the minister in charge to come and tell us how much, it co how, how much is costing for the system. Can you hold? I can do that uh, tomorrow. Can you hold you to that? Yes. Let's listen, let's, Kenyans to, me let, to that. Let, let, let's listen to what the president said in regards to fighting corruption. It will be the case that the, right, the director of public prosecutions keeps dropping cases because somehow they are unable to produce witnesses. It, is also, it cannot also be the case that corruption suspects rush to court to obtain anticipatory bail that shields them from shields them from due process. There is also no reason for corruption cases to drag in our courts for years. When the same courts are able to determine election petitions and related disputes within six months. Uh, right, and just before we dive into that, um, there's a statement here that was released uh, 21st of September, honorable members, about um, Safaricom invests invest in Kenya's health digitization evolution. And uh, the consortium includes Apero Limited and Convergence Network Solutions Limited, of course, uh, uh, convened by Safaricom, and will invest Kenya shillings. 104.8 billion shillings over a 10-year period to implement, maintain, and support the IHTS, which is um, Integrated Healthcare Information Technology System, um, and will recover the investment over the said 10-year period with monthly installments set to commence from February 2025 upon successful implementation of key milestones on the project. And of course, goes ahead to detail some of those. IHTS has several significant components to its delivery that include implementation of a health information exchange, um, in, uh, health, health information exchange, uh, development and rollout of a standard-based integrated hospital management information system, technology to dig digitize health products and technology, supply chain, comprehensive technology for health insurance to support digitization of the social health authority to curb fraud and improve efficiency and many others are listed and this is communication that was issued by uh, the chief executive office of safaricom plc 21st september 2024 that was peter ndegwa I, I, I must say that i'm quite surprised that um you would say that you're not aware about that you see the i think for 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 us in parliament there are two ways that we can get clarified information mm -hmm. either during question time on wednesday when we summon the cabinet secretaries to come and answer questions. Or sometimes we can ask a question in parliament and it's directed to a, the, the relevant parliamentary committee and that parliamentary committee will then get the communication of the, of, uh, of the information to the committee chair and the committee chair would normally. So if you, if you look at parliament proceedings during statements, mm -hmm. you'll find that various parliamentary committee chairs make the statement. What I know on this issue is that it's currently before the Public Investments Committee. Mm. And we are actually anticipating for the report to come 
before the house. So those are the two sources. Because on any information, the source is very important. You're lucky you have that information from uh, Safaricom. It wasn't uh, within my knowledge. But going to what uh, the, the clip of the president that you just put there, uh, when he talked about the issue of, you know, he's, he was basically saying we have challenges in our legal system. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are no witnesses, the DPP drops charges. Anticipatory bail is given to suspects who then during that bail time can be able to interfere with witnesses and uh, evidence. He was saying there is delay in corruption cases. But you forgot, he also actually took a, a swipe at Parliament mm. and he said that uh, Parliament has a conflict of interest bill that has been pending in Parliament mm. that we haven't passed. In fact, he challenged us and said, or do you people have a conflict? You know, you really don't want it to pass. So I think that was a very uh, good conversation that uh, we must constantly, constantly have okay. as a country with a view of being um, ensuring that we put uh, timelines. And it's not, uh, I know that for a long time, uh, when the, the, the president mentioned the, 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 the period within which they complete election cases, six months. If you remember in the past, mm -hmm. election petitions used to take up to past the term of the person. So someone could delay the case until they have served the full term. Yeah. Then it, it, it defeated the purpose. It is because of that reason that Kenyans had a conversation about it and eventually passed a law to say that they must be completed within six months. Today, there's also conversations about uh, uh, sexual uh, offenses mm -hmm. that they, or gender-based violence. They must be completed within a specified time. And I know there's conversations with the Chief Justice to ensure that there are special courts to deal with those matters uh, within, a very, uh, within a very short time. Okay. So these conversations are healthy because it gives us an opportunity to make changes. Mwishuma Mboe, who has been frustrating the war against corruption? Because uh, since the coming to office of the current uh, administration, we've heard of several cases being withdrawn. The first one, or the early ones, one of the early ones, was the withdrawal of case against then Deputy President Rigathe Gashagwa. We've seen other officials, including Henry Rotich, who was facing a particular case in regards to a role in Kimwarel Dam, and many others that continue to be withdrawn. What's going on? You know, you know, Sam, I believe that uh, when you are, if you want to slay the <coughs> dragon of corruption, you have to start at the top. The person in office has to be the one exemplifying that fight. And if I remind you that when uh, Mwai Kibaki became president of Kenya, mm -hmm. even traffic police officers were attempting to take bribes from, this, uh, from uh, motorists on the streets were being arrested and taken to police stations because Kenyans believed that the head of state was, uh, you know, was a person who was completely against corruption. So I think uh, the minute that uh, sinks into Kenyans, then they can start taking action. Unfortunately, uh, you know, what we've been uh, getting from this uh, regime is lip, uh, lip service. I don't want to enumerate uh, the number of uh, situations where His Excellency, the President himself, has been named, uh, you know, in, 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 in scandals that involve corruption. From the time he was Minister for Agriculture to the period when he was the Deputy President and was attempting to grab land belonging to Langata Primary School. So the, 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 at the top, if the person at the top is, is not clean, then unfortunately the system well, those gets... allegations ever confirmed? He, he did confirm them himself on national TV. For a long time, he kept saying that he, he had no connection with the hotel next to Langata Primary. But one time on national TV, he confirmed that that was his hotel. He's actually a part owner of that hotel. And that was uh, the management that was attempting to grab the land of Langata Primary School. It's in public domain. Our children were tear gassed and beaten up by police in attempt to grab that land. So I'm just saying that uh, when it comes to the fight against corruption, it must start at the very top. When Kibaki was there, there was an there was an attempt because people felt the president Kibaki then and his deputy, his vice president Kalonzo Musioka, people felt that uh, these are clean people and so they, they felt that it was possible to fight corruption together. <coughs> if if there is a problem at the top, it's very, very difficult to deal with that. But uh, I'm also happy, Sam, that uh, Hona Boruku has seen the light. He just said he's going to be, uh, to be defending the people against those, uh, you know, harsh uh, situations like this one of four billion 
Leon for the health cover. I'm happy uh, that he's able to do that. I hope he doesn't join the bandwagon of Kenya Kwanza members that are going out there fighting the church because the church said they don't want corruption in church. So I don't know whether he's, he'll also make sure that we protect the church together because now the next fight is against the church. You've heard over the weekend, I mean, uh, the church says, and you know, some that we're talking about corruption here. The, when it comes to when it comes to corrupt when it comes to corruption, <laughs> let me tell let me say this. But 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 it's about politics. Yeah, it's about our lives. You know, when when people take money to church mm -hmm. and they go and they donate, a, you know, a million, two million, three million, five million. It puts pressure on all their political opponents to also do the same. So where does that money come from? Uh, uh, who, who earns that kind of money? Not even the president earns that kind of money. So for you to go dishing out, and, and I'll tell you this, and uh, you can say it's politics. Deputy President, uh, you know, Kidure Kindiki, was CS for interior. He was not going to Harambe's giving money. The day he became deputy president, he had a million to go and give in a church. Uh, that's not politics. That, that is corruption. A million. He, I, it, yeah, two million. He had two million to go and give in a church. He didn't have that when he was CS. That's corruption because we have said the law is very clear that you cannot you cannot be taking Some. money to churches and announcing it. And in fact, the churches also have to help us in For that the fight. Benefit of Bui, let me say this, uh, professor. But that you will not professor, be fighting the church. Professor Kedore Kidiki is a son of a reference. Yeah. <laughs> he was he, all the fees paid for him and his siblings came from the tithe from the Christian. His yeah. father is a referent and has been a referent from the time you, he was a young know, man. You don't, know, you don't know that with the certainty. <laughs> no, no, I know with yeah. certainty. I know, I know... Uh, that his school fees was paid from tithe. Yes, his father has been a referent and he has never done any other job. From the time uh, the Mze Kideke was a young man to today. Mm. He's still there, he's a referent. So yeah, tithe is different from Arambes. Let me, let, me, let me say something. <laughs> yeah. When you see Professor Kidiki and, uh, and William Ruto tithing the church, is because of where they are come from. Also myself, yeah. I'm a product of the church. I respect the church. You, you know, you, there, there what, has to be has, a distinction what, what does between... What mean to you? Oh, yes. It's taking uh, in the Bible, what the what, uh, Bible says about the, the tithing. I'm not asking the Bible, I'm asking I, I'm not a reverend myself, Sam. You but are speaking I know, about tithing. So yeah, I definitely. know, I know you, you take your 10% to the church. So 10% of what? Yes, of your earnings. That is the commandment we have from uh, the and teaching what, we and have. And what the, the right hand gives, the left should not know. So, so when you you're go and convinced announce that whatever the president and the deputy have been giving out is 10% of the earnings? What I'm saying, Sam, and don't yeah. put two hands in my mouth, no, you're the one who's is telling us. what I'm saying, and listen to what I'm saying, is personally I've been paid school fees by Colonel uh, John Joy. I've been paid school fees by the late uh, Bishop Emmanuel Barabara. Mm -hmm. I have been in Kadra University, I've been consecrated in truth. So I know what the church has done as far as the society is. In? The motto of Catholic University of Eastern Africa is John chapter 17, verse 17. Mm -hmm. It says, mm -hmm. consecrate them in the truth. Okay. So, and, and what... That is the motto of the university. Yes. And you? And, and, and the, what I'm trying to say is that we are product of the church. Myself and many others. Are you happy about the Professor attacks Kidiki, on the yes. church? Okay, and William Ruto, he will not be where he is today without, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know being I, brought up properly in a church. To be honest, so, I, so we respect, we respect uh, Roko, the church. I was we respect not intending to even get to this conversation. I don't even know what we are talking about <laughs> here, um, but you brought it about tithing and ten percent of income, and Kenyans have been asking those questions, and they are concerned that the amount of money that is being dished out in churches by the political class. It is mm -hmm. beyond the earnings. That's for sure, if you're to even take a simple calculation at a time that you're still fighting corruption. I don't know, I don't know the earnings of, pro, of uh, President of the Republic of Kenya, it's and I don't know the earnings His salary of, is known. Uh, he probably as many other uh, business he run. I, I, I understand he sells chicken, I, I don't know. Uh, so I can't tell his uh, <coughs> total earnings as a person. I don't know. Okay. So probably if you, if you know, you can tell us. Hey, ask uh, questions. Just, yeah. uh, just for you to close that conversation. Yeah. I think I said this before, mm. that giving and tithing is personal. It exactly. is between you and your God. The manner in which you do it, the manner in which you want to present it, is personal. 
There is no rule about it. But what we know as a rule from the Bible is that 10%. But you see, it doesn't mean you can't even give beyond that. <laughs> but also, I think what's important is yeah. when you give to the church, you're not giving to a bishop or a priest or a reverend. You're giving to God. And it is for God to judge whether he finds, whether God will f find your <coughs> offering mm -hmm. acceptable or not acceptable. It's not for us as human beings to judge someone's offering because offering was not to me and it's not for the bishop to judge it. It is, that is between you and your God. So you may give, you give, but it is God who finds it acceptable. So I don't know why we have reached the point where now we are discussing w that this offering is not acceptable and that but is when, not acceptable. When it's made in public, what are Kenyans supposed to do with that information? No, I'm saying they can speak about it, but I'm saying it's something that I've always told myself. It is, I, I do not judge people's giving. Especially I think on, it's not, it's not in Especially life. when it's done in private or in secrecy, right? Yes? Sorry? What do you say? So I'm just, I, I, so I, I, don't see, I, I don't see how I can get myself into that conversation of discussing it. Because the money was, not be, was being, is to God. So I do not know whether, I'm not God to know I, whether it's you acceptable again, or not acceptable. If it's accept done in public, what are Kenyans supposed to do? Though Kenyans can choose to, if they want to discuss it, they can. I'm just talking about myself okay. personally. That, that, that's fine. But Deputy Speaker, tell me, because the President is uh, saying that um, it cannot be the case that the DPP keeps dropping cases. How do we correct this? Um, I, I, think, I think what has, uh, what, he is discussing challenges mm -hmm. that are constantly discussed within the judiciary. And even within ourselves as law society, mm -hmm. it's, it's subject of top, it's subject of discussions whenever we are having uh, you know uh, this when there is colloquiums and there is conferences. It's some of the discussions, and slowly something will have to be done about it. For example, we know that uh, we want to ask ourselves that even though when the DPP investigates. They usually co they already have witness statements at the very beginning, mm. and those witness statements are already filed in court. Then what happens is, the law requires that at the time of the hearing, that witness does actually appear in court. Mm -hmm. The conversation lawyers have been saying is, why don't we make it such that once you have filed your witness statement, even if you disappear, your wi your witness statement, which is done under all, it can be, uh, <coughs> can be, it can be is a, is admissible to the court despite your absence, mm. because someone can frustrate a case. So these are conversations that are going on. I know the challenge that we discussed was that that witness statement is not under oath at that time. Mm -hmm. It's just in writing. So maybe what we should say is witness statement should be taken before a commissioner of oaths so that it is an oath and so that they cannot, somebody cannot frustrate cases by making the witness disappear okay. at the time of the hearing. That's what I'm saying, there are changes that can be done. There is practice directions that can be published uh, by, the, uh, by the Chief Justice to improve. On issues of anticipatory bail, again, that is a conversation that I know has been within the judiciary. They've talked about bail for a long time. They even have what they call bail guidelines. And they will continue to improve those guidelines. So from the president's speech, anybody who reads it will be able to say, these are some of the, these are public conversations that are being held. And therefore, is there a need to improve the guidelines on issues of when to give anticipatory bail or not? Should we have uh, practice directions or um, or, uh, or state uh, say, saying when cases should be completed, certain type of cases should be, there should there be a time okay. frame. Okay. There is, uh, I know that uh, there was a time judgments, people would hear cases, but judgments would take forever. Under Chief Justice Chunga, I think, uh, that was when the, the regulations came out saying mm. that you should, you should deliver a judgment within 42 days upon closure of the hearing. Mm -hmm. That's not happening actually at the moment. It started at happening and then now there is a bit of delay on it. I know so that- the rule is no longer binding? No, what, what happens is it's, it, 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 peop, the judges were working very hard to ensure that they met it, but I'm seeing that right now it's even taking, it's taking more and more time. Okay. 
And, uh, and that is, and, and so that the judiciary is not aware of it, I've had them in their conferences uh, con having conversations um, about it. There is, uh, the, they, and there's many challenges. I know today in Eldoret, the Land and Environment Court has a conference. And see, these are some of the conversations that are ongoing. Like when somebody is polluting the environment and uh, somebody has given a, an order to stop them, they stop the factory from operating, then the person goes to court and the order is lifted, but they are continuing to pollute. Mm. There's discussions about making sure that there is a law saying that somebody should put a security deposit okay. with the court okay. to ensure that if you are continuing to pollute, there must mm. be some money that can be used later to clean up. All right, so, all right. so I think these are very important conversations that must continue. Okay. I, I have personally been very, um, uh, very, very, uh, you know, clear with the, when I've spoken to members of the judiciary that we need to have more robust conversations. For example, ha making sure that during the judiciary colloquiums that they have, that they should invite members, uh, members from the executive to come and explain some of the government plans and so on. So that even when the matter comes before the court, they can almost see where the starting period but, was. But where, where should that happen? Is, isn't that interfering with the independence it's not interfering. of the judiciary? Actually, this is, this is part of what judicial conferences are all about. Even we go across the world to be able to have uh, those conversations. Don't they have researchers for that, for them to understand? I mean, no, 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 no. You, you might blur the lines between no, the No, 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 not the, at the all. Arms. Not at all. Actually, the judges are supposed to spend 30% of their time being able to educate themselves. That is why we have the International uh, uh, Judges uh, Association. Okay. They are constantly meeting. You, you travel the world to go in here, and the people who come and make the representations are various people. You, it's not, so it's not just the judge, it's not um, that the judges just speak to themselves. Okay. They also the, want the, to the, the, That's fine, Deputy Speaker, because I want, I want us to make transition, and you have very little time remaining. I just wanted us to mention about the question of uh, IEBC, because as we stand here, as we sit here, um, still no sign of a formation of a selection panel. I mean, what do we do, Moshmo Aruko? Because uh, several constituencies, I think think about four members of parliament are not in the house because of it's what? It's the court case that has halted it. I, it's I thought, a court I case. I thought that was concluded. No. Not, not as at I knew a few days ago. Which, which, which case? There is a court case that has actually stopped. There is a challenge that was taken to court about the selection panel. Yes. Wasn't that concluded, really? Mushu no. Mboy, what's the status? No, in fact, if I uh, check... It, I don't think it was. What, what happened is uh, there, there was a dispute uh, with, with uh, two members. Uh, mm. There was a dispute between two members, and uh, it was sent back to parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a Zemir, we have given our, our, our verdict, we've given the name of the person that uh, should represent uh, the small parties within Azimio. And, and I think uh, the, 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 there's somebody along in the system that is dragging their feet. That is where the problem oh. is. I, 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 I can I, check I, for I you. I know it is exactly, a court case. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Moshima Roko. There's someone so, dragging uh, their feet. As, as, the, uh, as, uh, as Moshima confirms mm -hmm. about the case, I have one thing to mention about uh, corruption. It's just something about IBC. Just, uh, just corruption. A little bit, because the president talked that about it, uh, the cases uh, we've that, been withdrawn. Yeah. Uh, some will continue seeing cases being withdrawn again and again, so long as Article 45, mm. 2, B and C of Anti-Corruption and Economic Crime uh, Act Section. will not be uh, well taken care of. Which is? Because of the ones which are there in. Mm. One of the ones which is not defined is willing flay. The other one which is not uh, defined is carelessly. Lawyers will argue in court the meaning of these two ones, if they are not defined. But, but, but isn't it again, in order, yeah. prosecute the matter to the end, let the judge apply their mind mm. on the meaning of this, then yes. make an interpretation. And many cases have been withdrawn because of that. Another thing also is uh, uh, 2B, what, what which talks about prior planning. Prior planning, which is not uh, defined. I'm asking, as, yeah? which cases have been withdrawn because of those two terms? Uh, one of them is, um, the, the Cape, uh, Kenya pipeline uh, case uh, by... Against who? Against Sang and, and a number of team. That was not withdrawn. It, it ended up with acquittal. Yeah, yeah. It, yes, it was acquitted because um, it could not be defined some of these Which terms. is okay. I mean, they have gone through the entire yeah, process. Yeah. Now but, we're talking but, about cases but, being withdrawn. But Kenya has lost money. 
Isn't it? <clears throat> we are talking about cases being withdrawn. Not Kenya has lost a huge amount of money out of uh, that uh, um, business. Okay, Kenyans so who, who will on Kenyans X. For the money lost? Let's take a look at the feedback that I've been sharing with us uh, this morning. Uh, Citizen TV Kenya Samgi took the hashtag to use. Citizen Debrek Franco Rindio saying that Ethiopia and Rwanda have overtaken us because their PPPs are not shrouded in secrecy, no bribes exchanged hands, and they are not leasing their airports out for 30 years. Babu Michael, Kenyans have been saying a Danny deal wasn't open and was a rushed one. The Kenya Kwanzaa government kept insisting that everything was overboard. The truth is that only after the U.S. indictment of the conglomerates is when now the government is trying to cancel deals. Um, Gabi Wakasiaka, it seems the president was prioritizing external influences over the voices of the Kenyan people, cancelling the Adani deal based on new information provided by partner nations, raises concerns about whose interests are truly being served. Sam Masika, if the government of Kenya needs intelligence, let them listen to the people or better still follow social media discussions. Adani flows were discussed online. The U.S. might have been pressured by the people and they investigated. Kenya is the opposite. Dixon Oloch, Sam, we are tired of this narrative of um, three sources of government revenue streams. What we are asking is the process and the integrity level. Okay. MC Rumaz, it was repulsive to watch MPs give root a standing ovation for cancellation of Adani deals. The same MPs clapped for the president after they drove the finance bill, yet they had previously voted for it. We have a very, hmm, okay, all right, I will not read that. Uh, Omala, you're saying that, uh, good morning, I'm asking the hosted leaders, if every leaders we elected are praising, the, good morning, I'm asking the hosted leaders, if every leaders we elected a praising the president who will defend Kenyans and work for them. All right, uh, some questions there <clears throat> coming from the viewers. I have to thank you for making time for us. Uh, Deputy Speaker Gladys Bos, um, Mushmua Robert Mboy, Deputy Minority Leader of the National Assembly, and Geoffrey Ruku, uh, despite the little time we had together. Uh, thank you for making time for us. Uh, see you next time. My name is Sam Gituku. Up next is Matters Sporty Monday. Uh, good day.